include uh, deep learning, uh, large scale indexing, human understanding, and uh, person identification. Today, he will be sharing with us his expert opinion on high resolution network for uh, visual recognition. Uh, let us give our full attention to uh, Dr. Wang's uh, keynote and welcome him to get started. Okay, thanks Dr. Yu for the introduction. I also thank the invitation from the Big MM Program Committee. Uh, it's my honor to be here have, to have a chance to share our research work. My talk title is High Resolution Network, a Universal Architecture for Visual Recognition. So here is about several examples of visual recognition. For example, classification, detection, circumvention, base alignment, and post estimation. Actually, visual recognition is the fundamental and the core problem in computer vision. As we know, since 2012, the next NET has uh, in 2012, the next NET win the imaginated challenge. And since then, deep convolutional networks has been widely used in computer vision, especially for visual recognition. Now, almost all the computer vision problems are using CNN. So here are several milestone network architectures from from 2012 to 2016. For example, here, AnnexNet with the Imaginary Challenge in 2012. And then in, in 2014, there are two famous networks. One is GoogleNet, another one is Then in 2015, my colleagues invented a well-known network, ResNet. And then in 2016, this was developed. So if we have done some related works about, for example, those networks, we know that these networks actually are designed from image classification. So in the right side, actually in the right side, there are several examples about image classification. For example, given image, we want to know what object. So Dr. Wong, sorry to interrupt. So are you changing the slide? Because we can see the first slide. You, you the still moment. see the first slide? So, so I'm changing the slide. So sorry, we are still uh, can see the first slide. So, so maybe you, I'm not sure whether you, uh, Can you check whether I'm the presenter? Yes, you are the presenter. So, so what's wrong? Let me check again. <laughs> ah. Still the first page? No, we are able to see the slides now. Could you please, uh, I, I request you probably, uh, if you can go back to the previous slide where you have started. Yeah, so now we can see the slides. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's long. <laughs> so this page you, you did not see before? Uh, I guess we did not see, but now we can see. Thank you so much. Okay. So <laughs> let me restart. <laughs> okay. Let me start from this page. So this page actually about several video recognition examples. So classification, audio detection and segmentation, as well as human-related application, for example, face alignment and post estimation. And I mentioned actually the video recognition problem actually 
are the fundamental and the core problems in computer vision. So actually in 2012, their breakthrough in deep learning, one network called AlexNet was invented. At that time, AlexNet won the ImageNet challenge. Nowadays, I think all, most of you know about ImageNet challenge, right? So since then, uh, CNN or deep convolutional networks actually have been widely used in computer vision. Nowadays, almost all the computer vision applications especially for visual recognition problems, are all based on CN. So after 2012, from 2012 to 2016, there are many famous networks developed. For example, Google Net. Google Net actually was a winner of the ImageNet Challenge in 2014, and VGNet also developed in the same year. In 2015, maybe I think uh, most most of you and uh, most of you know about ResNet. ResNet now nowadays ResNet is a standard network in many computer vision applications. Actually, ResNet was invented by my colleagues at Microsoft Research Asia. In 2016, another network called DenseNet was developed. So actually, if we have used those kind of networks for your problems, you will know that those networks actually are designed from image classification. As mentioned before, AlexNet was the winner of ImageNet challenge, and GoogleNet as well as also are the winners of the ImageNet challenge. So in the right side, actually, I show several image classification examples. So given an image, we want to know what object appears in this video, in this image. So maybe we have a question. So in computer vision, I have, uh, have mentioned other problems, for example, post estimation, segmentation, and face alignment object detection. Maybe you have a question. So what's the next for the network architecture? So will all this architecture be used for other problems for example, post estimation, segmentation, besides image classification. So why we have this, we, this kind of question? Before answering this question, let me first review the classification network. So in the bottom, I show a network architecture. Actually, this network is the Net5, developed by Yang Lecon in 1998. So in this kind of architecture, actually, we can see that there are some subsampling layers. So by subsampling, the size, I mean, the spatial size will be reduced gradually for them here from 32 by 32 to 5 by 5, and then 5 by 5 uh, features will be processed to a vector. And finally, the vector will be fed into a classifier. So in other words, we can see that in this process, some convolutions are done on high resolution and some convolutions are conducted in low resolution. This means that the convolutions are connected in series from high resolution and low resolution. Finally, we output a low resolution limitations. And then this kind of design pattern actually followed by the, all the previous networks for the AnnexNet, VGNet, GoogleNet, ResNet, Densen. All those networks connected the convolutions in series from high resolution to low resolution. So why the low resolution actually are used for classification? Because we know that in classification, we only care about the global information. For example, here, we only want to know this image is about house. We do not care about where the house appears. We do not care about the special information. We call it specially caused representation learning. 
But for other applications, for example, here detection, we need to identify the box, the bounding box of the dog, right? And for segmentation, we call a pixel level recognition problem. We need to predict the label for each pixel. And the face alignment and the human pulse estimation, we need to identify the positions of the key points. This means that we need position sensitive repetitions. In other words, we need high resolution repetitions. So let's see how the previous method learned the high resolution repetitions. Actually, the previous good rule is to use a classification network architecture at the backbone and then do some extra process to get high resolution retention. Here I want to show two main solutions. The first one is called dilated convolutions. For example, in, in this figure, actually it is a figure about a uh, classification network. We we'll see that the, the resolution at the beginning it is larger and then becomes smaller and smaller. So here, Suppose sorry, we want to use dilated convolutions to replace the convolution in the smallest resolution. So by dilated convolutions, actually we do some sampling and the computer the convolutions. In this way, we can see that the spare size of the last stage actually is enlarged. We can actually we can use the same convolution parameters. But the drawback is that the complexity, the time complexity is high because in the last stage, the convolution complexity for each pixel actually is the same, but the spare size is enlarged. Then the com time complexity will be high. So this is the first approach or improving or erasing the res resolution. Another one we call the upsampling. Here we can look at the, the bottom figure. There are two stages. The right part actually is corresponding to the, the, the classification network. In the right side, we can see that we use clear arrow actually correspond to convolutions or upsampling, uh, upsampling operations. We can see that on the right side, we recover high resolution from low resolution by, for example, uh, upsampling layers or convolutions. So actually, here I show several typical examples belong to the upsampling category. The first one we can see the unit. Unit actually was developed in medical image. And the second aid, second aid actually is, a, is from a PAMI paper. And the decombinate also from, I think, from a ICCV paper. And our glass, our glass was initially developed from, for, for post estimation. Actually, if we look at the four architectures, actually they look, they look differently, different, but actually they are the same just like the, the two-stage process. And in this, in this two-stage process, actually, the resolution on the left side, we can see that actually the box corresponds to the page map. On the right side, the resolution is high, and then go through several uh, downsampling operations, and in the middle, we can see that the resolution actually is low. On the, on the right part, we gradually raise the resolutions. And then finally, we can get a high resolution. But we know that in the middle, actually, we already lose spatial information. It's hard to fully recover the spatial information by upsampling. This means that the position sensitivity actually is weak in this two-stage process.
So we actually want propose a novel high resolution levitation learning backbone. We call a high resolution network or H18. So we hope that H18 can answer the question: What's next for the new architecture? And I will show H18 can be used can be used many uh, computer vision application besides image classification. We call it H18 is a universal backbone. So here I want to show some information about H18. Firstly, the purpose of H18 is to learn high resolution limitations so that the position sensitivity is stronger than the previous, for example, uh, dilated convolution based mesh or upper based mesh. Another I want to highlight is that we design the network texture from scratch. Unlike previous method, previous actually are based on the classification networks. We do not based on classification networks. We design the network from, from scratch. The last point I want to share is that we maintain high resolution through the whole network. Unlike the previous method, recovering from low resolution. So actually the H was uh, was developed last year. We have a paper in CPR about H for post estimation. And later we done many other experiments for the segmentation, detection, and phase alignment and so on. And we published this paper in PAMI. Maybe uh, most of you guys know about PAMI. PAMI actually is it may be the, the, the top journal in computer vision and machine learning. So before looking at the architecture of H H R net, let me first show the classification network again for the comparison. Here we can see that we have three streams in the figure. The first stream is about high resolution. The arrow actually corresponds to those operations, for example, convolution or sampling or convolutions here. And for the box actually corresponds to feature maps, we can see that in the second stream, the resolution or the size is smaller, and in the third stream, the size is smallest. And here for the classification networks, as mentioned before, those convolutions are connected in series from high resolution and then medium resolution and then small resolution. So what do we do actually? Very simple. Rather than connecting the convolutions in series, we connect the convolutions in parallel. For example here, the first stream is high resolution. We start from, for example, uh, uh, start from the only feature in the high resolution as and get a medium resolution convolution streams in the middle. And then the small resolution convolutions, we connect with them parallel, right? So in this kind of parallel connection, we can see that the three streams actually are independent. The only dependence actually from the, from the input. The second stream, in the second stream, the input, comes from the first stream, and the last, the third stream, the input comes from the second stream. Besides the input dependence, no other dependence. This may result in some drawbacks. For example, the high resolution information cannot get help from low resolution information. So what we do, we perform fusions across those resolutions so that the high resolution feature maps can get help from low resolution feature maps. Because we know that because we know that in low resolution convolutions the reset field will be larger than the high resolution in the same number of convolutions. And then in the high resolution we know that the, the spatial information is 
is very strong. So with the help of the fusions, the high resolution, I mean the semantic degree of the high resolution convolution as high resolution tension can be boosted by using the low resolution and then medium resolution representations. So let's look. Let's look at how the fusions is conducted. Here, are just several examples. Just, just examples. So actually, for the for the fusion, actually the process, I mean the operation, actually very simple. Just for example, here. I show the uh, fusion about the three representation maps, also the three resolutions, high resolution, medium resolution, and the bottom one is about low resolution. Sorry that I cannot use mouse or cannot use a point. So uh, let me let me summarize operations about the fusion. We just use, for example, identity connection for the same resolution. And now, for upsampling, we use just use bilinear upsampling. We use bilinear sampling just for saving the computing computing cost. For the, the downsampling, actually, we use the stridic convolutions. The reason is that for stridic convolutions, we can have we can we can uh, keep the most of the information. For example, here. Uh, when in high resolution, suppose the size is 100 by 100, and the, uh, the, the number of channels is 50. And then in the medium resolution, suppose the size, for example, here 50 by 50, and the size, the channel now, the channel number is 100. We can see that the volume for the high resolution is 100 by 100 and 150, and for the, vo the volume for the medium resolution, it is. 50 by 50 by 100. It's just a half of the volume of, for the high resolution. So if we directly use, for example, bilinear downsampling, most of the information, and the information may be lost. But if we use stride convolution, we can learn to learn to do the dimension reduction. So that the, the valuable information can be pre preserved. So that's why we use stride convolution for downsampling. So here is a summary about the network architecture. We connect the uh, high resolution convolutions and the low resolution convolution in parallel, and we maintain high resolution through the whole process. We also do the do the fusions so that. Uh, so that the the high resolution tensions and the low resolution tensions they are semantic this they are semantically richer. As a as a result, the HNI can learn high resolution tension with strong position sensitivity. So here is the architecture instance that we used in our CV chart paper and the in the PAMI paper. So basically, we designed the networks using modularization. Here we have four stages. The first stage is all about high resolution, and the second stage is about two resolutions, and the third one about three resolutions, and the last one about four resolutions. And by modularization, we mean that in the, for example, here in the third stage, we repeat the same blocks four times. Actually, this just for the design simplicity. And for the fourth stage, we repeat the blocks three times. And in our network chart, network architecture actually different from ResNet, we just fix the depths and then we change the widths to tune in the capacity. For, for example, in our experiment, the weights for the first stream or the high, highest resolution, the resolution uh, the weights could be 
32 and 48. In our case, the weight is actually much smaller than resonant. For example, resonant is the first state, the weight is 256. So because of we can use smaller number of channels or smaller weights, the whole computation complexities and the parameter complexity actually can be similar to the resonant. Actually, I will show that the runtime complexity comparison with resonate. So let me use the first application, human post estimation. So what's human post estimation? In human po here we I give several examples about human post estimation. Actually, human post estimation actually aims to identify the position of the key points. In the human, for example, with the elbow, with the face, with the knee, or with the foot. Basically, there are two main pipelines for post estimation. One is top down. In top down, we first detect the person, and then we clock the person and then perform the single post estimation. Another one we call the bottom up. In bottom up, we do not have a human detector. So basically, basically, we first detect the key points, all the key points for the multi person. And then we group the key points together into persons. So that each group corresponds to one person. So in this experiment, I will show the top-down approach because in top-down approach, we can fix the human detector. And then we only need to perform single post estimation. Then we can easily show whether the backbone is super thin as the method. So here's the architecture for human post estimation. In our CVPR paper, we only use the high, highest resolution as the final representation. Here we can see the red arrow. Every arrow actually corresponds to the output representation. So here is the comparison with the previous method. In the left four method, actually all about resonate. For example, Mark Cassian from Facebook, it is actually based on resonate. And the, the second one, the third one from Face Plus, Plus, it is a startup in China. It also based on Resonate. And the first one is Simo Baseline, it also based on Resonate from my colleague. And the, the right side, the right three ones correspond to our method H and eight. So let me choose the comparison with the previous based run single baseline. Here I show the uh, time complexity and the uh, parameter complexity. So first let, let me use the AP score. So we can see that the single baseline, the AP score is 73.7. Uh, is we can see that for H and eight W32, the AP score is 4.9. We can see that we have a large gain, more than one point gain. But if we look at the parameter complexity and the computing complexity, we see that the parameter number actually is just a half of simple baseline method. And then for the time complexity, here our computing complexity in terms of G flops, G flops, we we can also see that the G flops is only a half then a half of the simple baseline method. So let's look at H18 W48. You see that when we increase the capacity of our method, we still can have a have gain from uh, 74.9 to 70 uh, 75.5. So besides we try to com combine other 
training data to see whether our channel can benefit from more training data. We can see that for the right, the right most column, the AP score is 77. We can see that after using more training data with the same network, H1 net W48, we can get 1.5 gain. This is actually very significant. So when we publish our our paper in last year CPR, so H1 actually become a standard method in human post estimation. So for example, in this year's ECCV, there are a challenge called COCO key point challenge. The winner actually use H1 8 for their for the, for their solution. So let me see how H1 improve the quality. Here we show the two kinds of improvement. The first one we call key point local localization. We can see that in the key point localization error, we have 1.2 gain. And for the right two comparison, right two columns, we can see that it's about key point type error. This means that whether the for example, left elbow, elbow is whether the left elbow is correctly identified as the left elbow or not right elbow. In, in this case, we can see that the gain only 0.1. This means that the most gain actually comes from the localization. In other words, actually, the resolution help the improvement. In other words, actually, H1 really achieves high resolution, higher position sensitivity. In our method, we, we all use a so called a close resolution fusion. So here we show that actually the fusion also improves the performance. We can see that without fusion, the MAP score is only 70. Point eight, but if we use a few units, we can get about uh, I think a two point six improvement. This shows that in our design, few units can help the improvement, and uh, the high, maintaining the high resolution also help in the performance. So this is about a, a human post estimation. Now let me show the results in segmentation. Actually, segmentation actually is a pixel labeling problem. So in segmentation, because in segmentation the face lamina, because both segmentation is more challenging than human post estimation. Yeah. And in face lamina, actually I will show that we will identify more key points. So in this case, we need to combine all the limitations from high resolution to low resolution. Our combination is very simple. We just concatenate them together. You can see the right side, the four Fourier arrows. So here is a comparison on cityscapes validation. So maybe I'm not sure whether you know about cityscapes. As so cityscapes, this is about a street view street view images. So we want to, for example, identify all segment, segment the human, or cars, or load sign, or trees, and even building. So in this comparison, we, we only compare with the previous, I think, standard method. For example, deep lab from Google, and the PSP, PSP net, from since time, since time is a, is a startup channel, and a unit. We can see that for the rightmost column, MRU, actually MRU I, is used to evaluate the second inequality. We can see that only our method get over 80 score, 80.2, all other methods below 80. Let's look at the parameters. Actually, our parameters are also very small, comparable with deep lab V 
Missouri plus. And then in terms of chip flops, chip flops actually is about the theoretical computing complexity. We can see that hours are below 1,000. And for deep lab and PC lab, all above 1,000. This means that our method can take smaller number of parameters, take smaller com computing complexity, but the, the final quality is even higher. So we, we also increase the capacity. We can see that our method can get a higher MIOU score near one point. So here is the result on C-scape test. Comparison. We can see that our method, when we submit, when we submit my paper to Pamela, our result is the best at that time. And then another one is about H and eight plus OCR. OCR actually is a techniques in our ECCV paper. If we have time, I will introduce about the OCR eight. It's actually is a one of the best one methods exploring the context adaptation for improving same thing quality. So in cityscapes, they are leaderboard. Uh, at the early of this year, our method H on eight plus one plus OC on eight and the sig fix and sig fix also and our ECCV paper. We can see that in, at that time, our method is ranked one, but after April, another method, another method from, another method from NVIDIA is ranked one. So is a rank one solution. When I read that paper, I found that it's actually that paper also based on our technologies, technology H on eight plus OC OCR eight. Because we already released the the source code H on eight and plus OCR. This about this 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 about cityscape seventeen lead board. So another uh, segmented leaderboard, ADE 20K segment. Actually, ADE 20K is about the same, same data set. It's from MIT. If you check the, the leaderboard, we, you can also find that the rank one solution also based on our air channel and, and OCR. So, so Previous about the second thing, let me show the results on face alignment. So what's the face alignment? Face alignment actually aims to identify or predict the positions, for example, eye corner, nose corner, mouse corner, the key points in the face. So actually, face alignment is very important for other applications, for example, face recognition, face animation, and then either, for example, face makeup. So face alignment is a fundamental problem in face processing. So actually, there are four widely used data set, WFLW, AFLW, and CFW and 300W. Here we only show the, the most challenges, the most challenging to data set, one is WFW. We can see that there are about 98 landmarks. The other one is AFLW. You can see that the testing data is about, I think, uh, more than, more than 5,000. And the training data set is about 20K. This means the data set is the largest. So, so I will report the results on the two data sets. First about the WFW. W actually was, I think it was 
released in 2018. At that time, only a few methods reported the results on WFW. We can see that the, the left column, we can see that some methods come from CMU and some methods actually from since time. And then in the right seven columns, well, let, let's first look at the test column. Test column is her accuracy or, or her result, her performance over the testing data set. We can see that our method is much better than the previous, previous method. So one interesting evaluation in this data set is that it's easy to choose a six subtests. Each subtest will co correspond to different variations. For example, post variation, expression variation, and the enumeration variation, markup, makeup, a clue, and a blow. We can see that on all the six uh, variations, our method performs better. Maybe every time our performance is best. And then in terms of backbone, we actually we use a smaller network, the HR8W18. So this is about the WFLW. Another one, AFLW. As I said, our method is also the base. In the two evaluation protocols, one is the full evaluation protocol, another one is the frontal. So now, now let me show the application on object detection. So what's object detection? Here I show several examples. In object detection, actually, we try to identify the box bounding the object. So in this experiment, experiment, we do not develop new framework, new detection framework. We just replace the backbones. So when we apply the h to the detection and the signal problem, as we follow the previous design, we also build a hierarchical limitations to handle the object scale variations. It's a standard, standard pipeline. So as I mentioned before, we replace the, the backbone for the ResNet in faster framework by our h -Net. We do not design new detection framework. So here I show the comparison with ResNet and the ResNet uh, its extension, ResNext. Here we have four groups for comparison. Each group, we hope that the, for, the, for example here, the first group, ResNet101 and HRNet32. We hope that the time complexities and the parameter complexity are the same. So that is the comparison is fair. We can see that for the first group, our AP is 41.1, but, but for resonant based mate, the, the AP score is only 42.3. We have a 0 0.8 improvement. But if we look at the APS, the APS column, we can see that we can have 1.4 improvement. Much, much higher than APM and APL. APL, why we can have higher APS score improvement? The reason is that we have high resolution. APS means that the average precision score for the small object detection. Because we have higher resolution, so we can improve the small object detection performance. And uh, we can have, we also have the a comparison with ResNet 150, 152 and uh, its extension ResNet 101. The last group, we compare with uh, one extension or faster thing called Cascade RCN. We can, in that framework, we also have improvement near, for example, here 0 0.9 improvement for the APC score. And then for the APC, for small object, we can have 1.8 improvement. This is about detection, purely detection. So let's see the results for instance segmentation. Different from object detection, instance segmentation try to cut out the objects. This is also different from semantic segmentation. Semantic, in semantic segmentation, we do not 
differentiate different objects, the different object instance. We only segment out the object belong, belonging to belong to the same category. But instance, we need to cut out the object instance. Again, we test our HRNet on the previous framework here, for example, mask and CN framework. Here we only show the two frame, two comparisons. If we want to see more comparison, we can check our primary paper. Again, our results is based on resonate. For example, your mask. Mask means a cutout performance. We can have improvement for bound box, the, the right part, the box, for bound box, we also have improvement. If we look at it carefully, the AP for small objects actually is also more significant. I mean, the improvement is more significant. So here we just show the results on fast CN and mass CN frameworks. Actually, in our paper, you will check other recently developed frameworks. For some folks, folks is a single stage object training framework, Sentinel and a hybrid task cascade. Oh, in all those uh, frameworks, actually, our results is, are based on the resonate based methods. So, actually, when I present our methods, most one of the question is, HRNet will take more memory and more time, because in most, in mo uh, most people will think if we improve improve or increase the capacity we will get a better result but actually in our method we do not try to in, we increase the capacity to improve the performance let's see, see the runtime complexity runtime complexity for example, your human post estimation we can see that for the last row you for us we can see that see that for h on it our f score is 74.4 if you look at the, the inference seconds, you can see that the runtime cost is almost same, almost same to the resonate based method. I want to mention that in this runtime complexity, we only use PyTorch implementation. In PyTorch implementation, actually, they do not support the parallel convolution well because in our in our HRNet, we have Four streams, and that, it means that we need to perform parallel conversions. So, if we have better implementations or in CPU implementation, our improvement in when in long time, for example, inference time, our improvement will be more significant. So, if we look look at the segmentation, actually, we can see that look at the Inference seconds, H on eight, the, the time, the long time complexity is much smaller than PSP8 and DPLAR. DPLAR. And for, for MRO, our is also be, better than the PSP8 and the DPLAR. So for optimization, we can, actually we can see the same improvement. So so when we do segmentation, detection, or other applications, we found that imaging pre-training is very important for the performance improvement. So we also train, pre-train our network on ImageNet. So we can see that our results is comparable even and even slightly better than ResNet. This actually this result, result is very interesting. Why? Our initial goal is to improve the resolution for, for example, segmentation or detection, persistent sensitive problems. We do not, we did not expect that the ImageNet clarification results will perform better than ResNet, but it actually this result is very surprising. H1 and perform base slightly better than ResNet. Actually, we do not know the do not figure out the reason why H1 can get have can have better results than ResNet. 
So here is a uh, uh, pipeline for network architecture design. In last year, we designed HRNet. It is the universal network architecture. It can be used for some segmentation, detecting post alignment, and the classification. So besides Besides those applications, I will show some other applications. So here is a summary uh, about HRNet. HRNet actually is a standard human post estimation backbone. And in segmentation, our result shows that it is better than, better than ResNet. And uh, we have seen many methods or many research papers actually use HRNet as a backbone to get higher, higher performance. And then in first level, our method also better than ResNet. In all detection, our improvement actually, to be honest, in all detection, the improvement is not as significant as segmentation and the human post estimation and first alignment. I'm not sure the reason, maybe the, the limitation of the framework. We only replace H N eight. Only replace ResNet using H N eight in for example fast ICN or mass ICN framework. We do not fully explore explore the potential potential of H N eight for detection. So here is a more, just a few examples for more application action, application for example face detection, human detection, and even for satellite image segmentation and a brain segmentation. So here I just uh, uh, this is an incomplete list of of some challenger winners about some challenger winners using H N eight. And mentioned before this year, ECCV, the Coco Key Point Challenge winner actually was HRNet. In last year's Coco Challenge, the Coco Key Point Challenge, almost all the almost all the methods actually use HRNet. For the dense post challenge, the winners and other participants actually use HRNet. I do not I do not I do not want to mention all the methods that are using HNA use HNA to win some challenges. So here's uh, some great works. So in the, in particular the rise to method multi-scale dense net and grid net. In in terms of the structure, they are very similar to our method, but they actually they do not perform well in segmentation, in, 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 in detection or in post estimation. The reason that they can only get stronger low resolution annotations, they cannot get from the high resolution annotations. The reason is that they use an unidirectional fusion. Only from, for example, in multi-self dense net, only from high resolution to low resolution. But in grid net, there are two stages. The left stage only from high resolution to low resolution, and then the right side only from low resolution to high resolution. So they are actually they, they cannot get strong high resolution tensions. I think uh, before the time is, uh, I can I I need to skip something. But here I use one slide to show why we still need a. Active design because many guys you know auto ML or NAS, you know architecture search. One question that you uh, the offer frequently asked: Since we have NAS, we have already search method. Why still have manually designed and it works the architectures? The answer is very simple. When we when you use NAS, you need to define the search space. We, how do you define the search space? Actually, network, network designs, in some sense, provide the good search space. And in some research, in some research, they already find that if you have already have a 
put such space. Whether some whether you use some advanced search method or just use random method, the performance actually performs similar. This means that the search space is a key. In other words, we still need active design. If we have better active design, we do not need maybe we do not need a mask. So an example, in this year, CPR, one paper from Google, they also try to deal with the, the low resolution representation issue in for them resonate. They try to use NAS to search bait high resolution representations, high resolution networks, some sim, similar to our H eight, but they use NAS. We use manually design. So because time issue, I need to uh, maybe I need to skip. Uh, so let me just uh, summarize the left pass, the remaining pass. Sorry. So actually, in little active design, besides backbone design, there are many other design for example especially for example for for the special problem for, for example for segmentation we need a context feature for post estimation bottom up post then we need to handle the scale even for post matching we need to combine the common sense or com human knowledge to design the network for the special problem here post matching i do not want to introduce the details but I want to say that active design is very important for the backbone and also for the specific tasks. Let me skip those details. So here is a, a QR code for our HR8. You can scan the QR code, you will see the our implementation, our open source at GitHub. We release all the models in the GitHub for face alignment, detection, segmentation, chemical animation, and image net. You can reproduce the results. Okay, I think the I can I, I the time is over. I think I can uh, conclude my my talk. So let me maybe use this page. Sorry for I. So here's a summary, and didn't forget the right part. We only focus on the left part. So HNet HNet is a backbone, universal backbone. It can be used to uh, segmentation, detection, any any many other computer vision problem, for example, optical flow. And we show that actually HNet perform better than ResNet. Thanks for hearing. Okay, thanks for your uh, uh, nice talk. So, um, any question from our uh, audience? Uh, so you have already oh. input the question in the Q and A. Uh, oh, let me check the questions. All right. Let me check the questions. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So we had some questions. So probably someone has raised hand. I guess Yaman, yeah. do you have any questions? Oh, the first question is uh, capsulate replacing. Actually, this is a very good question. So, in current CN, though it claims that the CN can handle some environments, for example, scale environment, translation environments, orientation environments. But in my experience, actually, we need explicitly handle the environments. In capsulate, actually, it explicitly handles the scale environments, orientation environments. So, we still need more powerful method to handle those environments. I'm not sure whether my answer is, whether I answered the first question will 
capsulate to replace CN. So uh, maybe currently capsulate cannot replace CN because we do not have, maybe it's junk, maybe it's, and maybe light data set or maybe strong optimization, optimization techniques to optimize capsulate. But I think the direction is right. We need to handle, explicitly handle the scale orientation vibrance. Oh, the third question is about HRNet and uh, efficient. And it's a good, very good question. So in efficient Efficient actually is a strong backbone. I think in the current design, maybe efficient efficient actually at least perform better than HRNet on imaginary classification. But uh, it's not it's does not say that HRNet performs worse than efficient net. This is because we do not use some tricks using efficient net, for example, stronger telecommunication or global convolution or other, for example, SE net to boost the performance. But in our HRNet, we want to deliver the message, high resolution is important for visual recognition problem. Even maybe for most visual recognition problem. So I hope I can answer the question about HRNet performance comparison with efficient net. So any other questions? Uh, let me uh, ask uh, uh, one question. There, there are lots of uh, milestones, uh, deep uh, architectures such as Google Night, VGT uh, Night, REST Night, and the uh, Dense Night, which are, are developed from the image classification tasks. So can yes. you simply uh, give us a little bit of uh, a uh, general idea of uh, a high resolution network for a uh, general uh, visual recognition. What is the uh, different from the existing uh, deep architectures? Yes, I know probably you have already uh, introduced a lot, a lot, but we want to uh, hear some uh, yes. general ideas and how this uh, model can uh, recognize the general uh, visual tasks. Uh, thanks for the question. It's a very good question. Uh, so, so actually, in HRNet, the only point that we want to say is that we need a high resolution. Why? Because in most vision recognition problems or other computer vision problems, the the, the resolution or the spatial uh, the position sensitivity is very important. But in image classification, we do not care about the spatial information, right? I mean, the way the, where the object is located. So this is why we design high resolution. But the idea is very simple, how to design a network. It actually, this is very tricky. We need to carefully design, design the operations. For example, I mentioned the two networks. One is multi-scale dense net, another one is grid net. In terms of structures, they are very similar to HRNet. They are parallel. They also contain high resolutions. Why is it those networks do not work, work well? The reason is that they the reason is that they do not figure out what's the key. The key in our method we need to maintain high resolution. But in in VGNet, ResNet, Google Net, and uh, and uh, Alex and uh, even DenseNet, they do not maintain resolution. They use the pooling of strategic convolution to reduce the size. So that's why our method can perform better than ResNet and other methods for the Google Net. This is the key we need maintain the high resolution. Another issue is that in ResNet based uh, applications, they all based on ResNet. Then do some, uh, make some challenge, make some changes. But you know that if you based on something, the changes, the changes will be very limited. You need to fix like a bond ResNet. 
and then do some extra extra changes. But in our design, we do not based on any networks. We design the network from scratch. So it's why HNN is put, is potentially better than ResNet. This is our initial initial source when we start started our research on ResNet on HNN. I'm not sure whether I answer your questions. Yeah, another question is about uh, so you design uh, you, um, uh, a unified uh, the architecture uh, which can be used for the lots of uh, visual applications such as the human pose estimation, uh, yeah. semantic uh, segmentation, and object uh, detection. But how are uh, your net or uh, your uh, HR net uh, can capture the different visual the tasks. What kind of feature oh, this is the key to uh, extract different uh, the visual uh, aspects according to different uh, uh, tasks? So this is a good question. So uh, actually, in my original plan, I want to present some uh, two other net, two other works about the architecture head design, head architecture design for the specific applications. So for each one, it only capture one common requirement for visual recognition problem, high resolution, spatial sensitivity. But for actually for other, many other applications, for, the, for example, segmentation, we need, we need to use a context to have a better performance. Yeah, because in segmentation, we, in segmentation, we want to uh, predict the label for each pixel. A pixel is just an RGB. What's the label? Actually, for pixel, for one pixel, it has no label. So where's the label? The label actually is the object. I mean, the, the object label. What's the object? The object line, uh, the pixel line object. It means that a label, a label of pixel is a label of the object that the pixel line in. So, HNA just uh, kind of the one common requirement. For other specific applications, we still need to carefully define the page. Uh, sir, I would like to ask something. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, do activations have effect on the performance of the model? If yes, then uh, specifically, uh, starting networks have been proposed by Harvard. So have you tried non-continuous, like continuous uh, activations, like sinusoidal activations in your network? Hey, so right now, please, I know you So your question about, maybe, can you input it in the, in the chat box? Sure. So in the chat box, I found other questions. The one is, why we need a repeat fusions? Oh, the reason is that because the, the parallel streams, there are no interactions. This means that they perform, they compute or they learn the fit, the reputation independently. Actually, we know that if one has low resolution can have a high resolution, and high resolution can have a low resolution. What's high resolution uh, can have from, uh, what's the help from high resolution? Because high resolution has, uh, has a high, and the spatial sensitivity features for, for low resolution, usually the semantic degree is higher. It's because that semantically is usually re related to the receptor field size. Receptor field means that uh, the scope or the scope that is one pixel can see. So this is why we need a feeling. Why we need a repeated feeling? Because that we do not know where we need, we should have because in the in, in the whole network, different uh, uh, different I mean the different layers have different uh, different uh, have representation with different semantic degree and uh, different uh, uh, spatial sensitivity. This is why I will repeat it the few years. So another question is uh, a key point realization error. Oh, 
This is a good question ask for about how to evaluate the key point localization. Yes, this is a good point. So we will release uh, the code about this kind of evaluation. Thank you. So let me check the question in the QA box. Oh, cloud pause, they said, right? Hi, I turn it. Good morning, oh, sir. This oh. is Chavi. Right? Yes, sir. So my question is when we are calculating a key point localization error, so we do have a set of key points for the same image ready with us as ground truth, because I doubt at this part. Sorry. When we are making a localization of the key I'm points. Not clearly, I'm not sure whether you did, whether yes, and <laughs> Maybe there's something I cannot hear you cle clearly. Sorry. Okay, okay. Now, can you hear me? Yes, it's, it's better. Yeah. It's better. Okay, I am asking so, when we are calculating uh, key points uh, for my human pose estimation, so yes. we are calculating the key point localization error to evaluate my estimation, right? Yeah, I, I so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, uh, uh, so to calculate localization error, mm -hmm. so uh, are we available with the ground truths of the key points there in the frame for is every I... image, like labels yes. we have for classification application? Yes. So uh, I'll, maybe I'll, I, your question is about how to it is a variation for, for example, localization error or, mm -hmm. localization or type error, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, I think I have, maybe I have answered the question. So I will release the code. Actually, if you, I'm not sure the, the, the paper title, maybe 12, uh, 12, three years ago, one paper is divide the post estimation performance into several into several groups some are about uh, uh, type some are about uh, localization so i will uh, i'm not sure whether I can, let me check the maybe i can share the title in the oops, let me find the title Oh, maybe you can find the paper from the Coco Key Point Challenge. Let me Coco Key Point Challenge. Mm -hmm. Key Point. I cannot find the. So you can send an email. Well, I will send you a paper about how to categorize the uh, errors in different uh, different groups. Okay. Okay, sir. So. You know your question. So, uh, another question is another question is about complexity, right? Activation, activation, especially. Oh, this is a good question. I think from Tash. This is a good question. Actually, we we do not find any the side activations. I'm not sure whether the perform how this kind of activations influence our network. This is a good question. We will try speaking how different activations help our network. Is that a question? Yes. Another question is about yes. complexity. Actually, I have already mentioned about, about the, the theoretical convention complexity and uh, runtime complexity. 
basically, for long-term statistics, we can use a smaller runtime and uh, have better results, for example, for second thing like post estimation and detection. It's a good question. So another, oh, I should mention that why most guys have this kind of question. The reason that we use smaller number of channels, for example, 32 or 48, this is much smaller than for the 1000 in ResNet. That's why we use multiple streams. We still can have lower computation complexity. This is the key. We use smaller number of channels. So and this is a question from chat box. Uh, another question for, from the QA box. So how about H high H net? So the question is how high H net out from H net? Uh, the reason is that in H net and a high H net, higher H net tries to improve H net by Learning a higher resolution reputations. So in natural net, actually we, we we use the stem so that we can only have one or four resolution. But in higher internet, we can one or two resolution. This means that in higher internet we can have a stronger position sensitivity. It's why higher internet perform better. So you, if you want to see more the result on cloud posts, you can check our check our our paper in I think a C sharp paper, high H and eight and another archive paper. Hopefully I can ask her. I I already asked the question about how high H and eight. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, it's time to close this session. Okay. Thanks, uh, Dr. Yu. Thanks, all you. Thanks, all the attendees. Uh, thanks for nice uh, uh, talk. Thank you. Okay. So I, I can jump, right? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. Thank you. And... Thank you. Okay, thank so everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, wow. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And I can jump out, right? Yeah. So, Dr. Wong, uh, some uh, uh, attendees had requested for uh, your slides. If it is possible, you may share with us. If it is possible, we can. I, I will. I will send the send the PDF version because in this slide, sure. I no, sure. something back up pages okay yeah perfectly fine with us and yeah so some attendees also requested for email id i mean if you're comfortable you can also mention that in your slide uh yes yeah so it is up to you yes thank you yeah thank you so much dr wang and thank so you. everyone we will be starting now the best paper session in nine minutes so uh let me probably post the link here itself and you might have already uh, received the uh, details uh, or the email as well how to attend so i'm just posting the link here yeah so see you all in nine minutes uh, for the best paper presentation thank you so much